swung the first time and missed it. Came back for it though, and then he spit it. This one, we got the camera still rolling because they still got them buttoned up. It's a decent smallmouth, and he spit the hook. <laughs> well, let's see if this one will stay on the hooks because this morning, my fishing buddy Scott Walsh and I have had this happen four times already in about 15 minutes. Beautiful fall morning here in northern Minnesota. Scott and I are fishing a lake, quote unquote, big secret lake. That's one of the species we're after today. Smallmouth bass. Because this lake does have both largemouth and smallmouth, we decided to start out shallow and on some rocks, in this case, for smallmouth. I got him, that was a nice one. I got him, he's got two or three with him, Scott. Does he really? Yeah, it's just the Ooh, whole lake is coming with him here. I don't have the right bait for a follow-up. Oh my gosh, look at him. Give it a shot. There's, oh, two of them were biting the same lure. Oh man, look at him. You know, and this is a classic summer spot right here. Main lake reef like this, but these fish will hold on this shallow, Scott. And um, earlier on, you were telling me why conditions being what they are with the weather and the, and the change of seasons, why these fish are shallow right now. Yeah, you're right, Roger. We timed this perfect. I mean, couldn't, couldn't have done it any better. Um, we've already had a couple really cold nights. Uh, we had some frost, temperatures down in the 30s for about a week. And uh, then afterwards, we got a real warm shoot, you know, 70, 80 degrees even for a few days. When that happens, the smallmouth usually just pile right up on top of the reefs, shallow two to five feet, and you can catch them pretty much on anything you want, but it's hard to beat a top water uh, and a crankbait, um, maybe one piece of plastic, a flutter worm or something like that to pick off a few more fish and then just run the reefs. It's pretty easy fishing and you catch lots of big ones like that one our Roger just got. Yeah, and this will happen all over the Midwest. So any lakes near you that have smallmouth bass, when you get that, that rebirth of summer in the fall season after those cold nights, get out, fish shallow rocks, and you'll put big smallmouth in the boat just like that. Well, we're certainly seeing them show a preference to uh, crankbaits at Wigglewort when we don't have rocks on the surface. If we're fishing a little bit deeper reefs, we're seeing about eight feet of water here. Won't come up out of eight feet to hit the top water. They'll come out of three to five. I think, their, I think their moods changed a little bit too. I, I think I made that same cast uh, about three times before this fish finally bit. So I get a feeling there's a lot of fish down there right now. They're just, they're just staring. Good average size today. I don't know if you can see it or not, but he's got a, some orange tips, crayfish claws sticking out of his yap. <laughs> and look at the front of that wiggle wart, those orange tips on the bill. Orange tips hanging out of his throat. Talk about uh, matching the hatch, so to speak. He didn't like me taking that crayfish out of there. Grabbed a hold of it, tried to give a little tug, and he just swallowed it. a lot of fish on crankbaits today and it's it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, it's important that the crankbait stays in contact with the bottom as much as possible so you're throwing a crankbait that runs a few feet deeper than uh, the rocks you're fishing. A lot of the humps we're fishing today are two to say eight feet deep so you want a bait that'll run at least eight feet. It's just a slow grind through the rocks you want that bait hunting around and bouncing off the rocks. Three of my favorites that I threw today uh, is the DT6, a uh, new scatter wrap, and uh, wiggle wart. Wiggle wart's probably one of my all time favorite crankbaits, and today the fish definitely had a preference for it, caught a lot of fish on it. Um, sometimes the others work better. Wiggle wart fish. Yep, it's a smally. Not a monster, but just a really nice solid fish. One hook slipped out of him now, but when he first came up, he had the whole bait completely in his mouth, so he, he, uh, he, ate, he ate it right. He did Careful. what he was supposed to do. Keep the crankbaits out of the hand. Not bad. Not bad for a fall day of fishing. A lot of guys uh, this time of year would expect to be sitting in a duck blind in uh, winter boots and freezing. Not complaining at all to get a day like this and be able to catch a, catch a few bass. Are they back on the top water on this yeah. spot or what? Got him. 
you know, we're starting to lose our sun here. There's some weather coming in. And for a lake that Scott and I haven't fished in, I don't know, probably, it's probably been 10 years for me, Scott. I don't know about you, but we have had a ball catching some big smallmouth today and really good fishing. Look at the yap Ooh. on that fish. <laughs> and what a great day, huh? Oh, what a, day, what a way to finish it up, huh? <laughs> nice. We've had fun, pretty fun weekend of fishing. Pretty fun day, look at that monster. And that's what coming up to Northern Minnesota in the fall is all about, folks. Beautiful smallmouth bass. I think that fish is 19 or 20 inches, isn't it? Yeah. What a fun day. Thanks again, bud. Yeah. Great day of fishing. Great day, real good. My right, buddy Scott Walsh from Ely, I'm Roger Cormier, folks. Hope you had fun watching our segment today. We'll be right back with more Midwest Outdoors. Mm -hmm.